Good evening. Welcome to the channel's Disney Lorcana content. Lorcana is a physical card game. We'll be playing in this fan-made simulator. I would encourage anybody who's interested in Lorcana to pick up the actual cards and to get involved in the Lorcana community, maybe go to an event, as this will support the developers and ensure they continue making more cards. In this video, I will teach everyone how to play Lorcana and go over the mechanics of the game. So we'll be playing a game so that I can demonstrate how the game is played. First, we'll take a look at one of the cards and go over basic stats. In the top left corner, we have the cost of the card and resources. That's four. In the middle right of the card is the attack and defense stats. Three is the attack, four is the defense. These two diamond icons on the bottom right of the card, that's how much the character quests for. And then the text of the card is the character's ability. This symbol on this particular card means that the character has to... Well, this ability says this character can't exert to sing songs. Exert means the same thing as exhaust in Lord of the Rings LCG or Marvel Champions or something like that. It means to use the cards one action for the turn. There are numerous other abilities cards can have um, that we'll go over as we play. I think the best way to teach the game will simply be to play a game and we will I will teach the mechanics as we go. So as in other card games you can play cards which are, are two colors. This is a green purple deck. These are just categories of cards so that you don't have a completely open format. We have a mulligan here. You can mulligan any amount of cards. You'll notice some of these cards have a decorative border around their cost and some do not. Decorative border cards can be used to generate resources. We want to start with a fairly low curve. So we've got a mulligan like this. So over here on the right is our current level of resources. We have zero resources. To gain resources, you have to ink a card. That means you have to take one of the cards that has this decorative border and you put it face down in your ink pool and that will now give you one resource every round that you can use. Each round we can only ink one card, so we can basically gain one more resource than we had the previous round, each round. I'm gonna play the Cursed Merfolk card here with my one resource. Cards have summoning sickness when they enter play, so it has no action unless otherwise specified. This particular character Whenever this character is challenged, each opponent chooses and discards a card. That means attacked. He quests for two. Now, cards cannot be challenged when they are ready. They can only be challenged when they're exhausted. So, that creates some strategy around whether you want to quest or not. If I quest with this character, he can then be attacked. If I don't quest with this character, he can't be attacked. But I need to quest in order to win, because you win the game by getting to 20 lore. This character, you can see two diamond icons on the card. Therefore, I will generate two lore by questing with him. And I'm going to do that. This character wants to be attacked. Because when he is attacked, the opponent has to discard a card. Now, I also want to ink another card. Meaning, put it face down to generate a second resource each round. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Sharon Abog's Followers. I don't want to play Madame Mim because I don't want to bounce my Cursed Morfolk back to hand. So I'm going to play Sharon Abog's Followers. Madame Mim has the ability when you play this character, banish her, which means she's defeated, or return another chosen character of yours to your hand. don't want to return Cursed Morfolk. This is a bounce type deck, but Cursed Morfolk isn't really a very... This card doesn't want to be bounced. It doesn't do much see what this does. Well, you have another character in play. This character gains evasive. Evasive means only characters with evasive can attack them. Challenge means attack. He's playing a second Pascal. Uh, 
Uh, how did my character get bounced back to hand? I missed it. Anyway, um, we're going to ink another card here. This time we're going to ink Madame Mim. So Sharon of followers, whenever this character quests, you may banish them to draw a card. So I can quest with Sharon of followers, or I can attack this exhausted Pascal. And when you attack, you deal your character's damage, and you take their character's damage onto yours. So each will be defeated if I should attack. I'm going to go ahead and ink Madame Mim. And then I'm going to play Kit Cloud Kicker. And when this character enters play, you may return an opposing character of attack 2, which I'm going to do, on the Pascal. And then I'm going to go ahead and quest with the Sharnabog. And I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I think I do want to draw a card. So let's do that. Banish him, draw a card. Just cycle. So, currently 3 to 1. I have board advantage. I do not have card advantage. He's got one more card in his hand than I do. He's inking a card, so we now each generate three resources per round. It's a relatively simple game, but it's got pretty complex deck building, which is a reason that I like the game a lot. He's playing his Pascal again, and he's going to quest for one. So we will ink one of these cards, probably the Shernabog, maybe Rafiki. He's a good attacker, not a very good quester. Let's ink the Sharon of Bog, so we'll get up to four resources. We can play Flynn Rider, play Rafiki, and we'll play the Cursed Merfolk. And we'll go ahead and... Oh, I can't attack this character because he has evasive. And only characters with evasive can attack, so I will just quest with him for one. Not really worried about him getting attacked. He's inking Madame Mim, so he may be playing a bounce deck as well. Looks like he is. This looks like a mirror match to me. Ursula is a character that's good at songs. Songs is something I'll go over. I only have one inkable card, but I can give evasive to one of my dudes, which will allow me to deal with his Pascal. So I kind of play Tinkerbell, even though I would like to ink to generate more resources. So we're going to give evasive to can give evasive to Rafiki. He's not a good quester, so we can take out a Pascal. Cursed Merfolk is always going to be questing. Flynn Rider is a good quester because whenever he's challenged, the challenging player has to discard a card. And we'll quest with Cloud Kicker as well. So this is a tempo style deck, which means that we're not super concerned about card disadvantage. We're all about controlling the board. It's going well so far. So he's using a song. A song is basically an action or a spell. Um, they can be have their cost discounted if you're willing to exert a character that has that cost. So he exerted his Ursula to play the song for free, the spell for free. He returned my cards to hand. So we're playing very, very similar decks. And we're just going to go ahead and I do want to deal with the Ursula. She's a big deal because she allows you to play songs twice. And so I'm going to think I'm going to ink Flynn. 
I'd like to build up to Yzma. Then I'm going to play Merlin. He allows me to draw a card when I play him. And I'm going to play the Merfolk again. And I'm going to deal with the Ursula. I have to. Ursula is too big a threat. It's a rather inefficient trade, but... Ursula is a very big threat. So this character has the trait Shift. Shift just means you can discount Yzma by replacing a Yzma that's currently on the board. So if I had a smaller cost Yzma already out there, I could combine them into one. But that would discount the Yzma from six cost down to four. So this is like a, a cost discount. So you can ramp up by playing like smaller versions of main characters, basically like a Mickey Mouse or a Jafar or something like that, and you, then you can play these earlier than you otherwise would be able to, but at the cost of card disadvantage, which is a very interesting and well-designed mechanic in the game from a strategy point of view. He's playing Genie, which allowed him to return a card to hand. He just returned a one cost. It's not that big a deal to me. And so my Yzma, when I play this character, shuffle another chosen character card into the player's deck, and that player draws two cards, so I can deal with the genie at the cost of card disadvantage. Do I want to do that? What are my other options? I can make him discard a card from hand, which is pretty good. I think I will do that. I'm going to ink the Ursula because I don't have any songs right now. And I'm going to play another Merlin. We're just going to go for a, a card advantage strategy here which is not usually what my deck does. So he does have a song. Ursula allows me to force him to discard a song so he can get rid of friends on the other side and I get to see his hand and see that he just has Maleficent left. I'm gonna go ahead and quest for one and then we'll pass the turn. So he's at a, a card disadvantage. I would say his board position's okay. Playing Maleficent. When you play this character, you may draw a card. And then a Flynn Rider and a Pascal. And he has no more hand. And he's just going to quest with the genie. Okay. So Merlin, he can. I'm thinking. I mean, Yzma. I could use him on one of my guys and draw cards, but I don't really need the card draw. Um, I can't challenge Genie. The Merlins each quest for one. Do want to get the Queen's Castle out. So I'm going to play Queen's Castle. That's more card draw and it quests for two. Locations are a card that offer you passive lore gain every round. You don't have to exhaust them. They have a movement cost on the left side of the card there, which is what it will cost to move a character there, and then you can gain the ability of the location. So for each character I have, I can draw a card. I think I'm also going to play the Merfolk. Gonna move the Merfolk there. And then we'll do some questing. I'd say he's in a position where he needs to attack me. If he wants to do a lore race, I think I'm okay with that. I may shuffle one of the Merlins into my deck next round. So I need seven lore to win. I have four on board, plus one for the Merlin is five, plus two for the Queen's Castle. So that's going to be game over since we're going to get to 20. And that's a game of Lorcana. Opponent declined rematch. So let's go take a look at this deck. 
This was a, a deck copied from a post about a in a Lorcana event. We got Cursed Merfolk. Whenever this character is challenged, each opponent chooses and discards a card. Flynn Rider, whenever this character is challenged, the challenging player chooses and discards a card. You can see a common theme here. Ursula, when this when you play this character, chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a song card. Kit Cloud Kicker, you may return chosen opposing character with two attack or less to their player's hand. So you bounce opposing characters back to the hand for some board control. Mother Knows Best, which is a song, which means a character with cost three or more can exert, use their action or exhaust, to sing this song for free, which means you play the card for free if you're using to, willing to use the action of one of your characters. Return chosen character to the player's hand. You can work on an enemy or a friendly. And then you have Ursula whenever this character sings a song. So whenever you use her, whenever you exert her to play a song, you may play that song again from your discard for free, then put it on the bottom of your deck so you can double play your songs. Very powerful effect. Tinkerbell Evasive, which gives your character some defense meaning they can only be attacked by characters with evasive. I'm not that sold on Tinkerbell in this deck. I think uh, she does provide a way to deal with evasive, but I don't know. I guess it's good. Continue testing. Then we have Genie, who also has evasive, and when you play this character, you may return chosen, char chosen character to the player's hand. It's only got three foreign stats, but it's a pretty good way to deal with a powerful enemy like a Jafar or something like that. Chernabog's followers, whenever this character quests, you may banish them to draw a card. It's just a cantrip, basically it cycles itself through. Rafiki has zero attack, but when attacking he has three attacks, so he's a one cost three two, which is pretty good. Whenever he challenges a hyena character, this character takes no damage from the challenge. That doesn't come up very often. Madam Min allows you to bounce one of your friendly characters back to hand and is a 3-3. Friends on the other side is a song that draws two cards for the cost of playing this card. Madam Mim, another version of Madam Mim. Four attack, three defense card that has rush, which means this character can attack the turn they're played and it's another bounce, a friendly card back to your hand. Then we have some different Merlins. We have a Merlin that buffs your friendly characters with plus three attack, draws a card when played and when leaving play, gains a lore when played and when leaving play. Queen's Castle is a pretty solid location, which allows you to draw a card for each character you've moved there. It's got seven defense. Opponents can tap and attack your location every turn. Locations don't have an action to spend, so they don't need to be exerted. That they passively generate lore every round. So Queen's Vet Castle has been a pretty strong, pretty big threat location in my experience. And then Yzma, I'm not sure I'm sold on Yzma. I may look into adding something else to the deck. Doesn't seem like I want to play Yzma very often. But Yzma, when you play this character, shuffle another chosen character card into their player's deck, and that player draws two cards. Could be good for some emergency card draw. I don't think I'm going to want to shuffle an opponent's card into their deck very often. Anyway, that's Lorcana. We're going to have some more games coming. We're going to play some ranked games. This is a very good game, in my opinion. I like this game a lot. It is much deeper than I thought it was going to be when it was first announced, given the Disney theme. I wasn't sure that this was going to be a game for serious card game players, but it does appear to be. It's a very solid game. It's pretty deep as far as deck building goes, at least relative to something like Hearthstone or Marvel Snap. And if you're interested, I would strongly recommend picking up the actual physical cards and playing some events. This client does exist third-party client for playing the game but I would treat it as a a demo for the game basically and a way to practice when you don't have an actual player to play a physical game with but obviously if we don't actually go out and buy the cards then the development will be discontinued and we don't want that if you like the game 
that being said, we're going to jump into some more games, this time in ranked mode. So, starting at the bottom of the ranked ladder. And we'll see how it goes. I'll be playing fairly slow and checking out a lot of cards because I don't know what all the cards do yet. So far what I've seen from this game, I like it. It's surprisingly deep. When I first saw the Disney Lorcana press release, I assumed it was going to be a game that would be more on the shallow side, but it has impressed me so far. So, gonna mulligan some of the four drops, probably some of the threes as well, looking for playable creature cards that will curve out well. This is a bounce style deck. Probably ink a merlin goat or a crab, probably a crab. And then we'll play the cursed merfolk. I like that card a lot, I think it's really good. So the ultimate goal here, I'll be making Lorcana content, tier lists, showcasing decks and so forth. Hopefully get more people interested in what I think is a very good game. So inking Rapunzel. Okay, so we're going to throw away the most expensive card that we have. Actually, I might want to throw away the Queen's Castle. That's a card draw though, and we may need the card draw. So, play Cursed Merfolk. Cards in Lorcana have some creatures have summoning sickness, so you can't quest or fight with them on the turn that they enter play. So there's nothing I could do with the Cursed Merfolk creature card there. You win this game by getting to 20 lore. You can see our lore counter on the left side of the screen there. Each turn your creatures can quest see their lore value on the bottom right of the card, the diamond looking symbol. The Cursed Merfolk has quests for two lore. You can quest or you can fight, but you can only fight against opponent's creatures that are exhausted. Piglet is in the ready state. You'd be able to tell if he was exhausted because he'd be sideways. Cursed Merfolk, if he gets challenged, he forces the opponent to discard. Um, I don't have a two drop here. I've got a one. I do want to ink another card. Ink is how you use or uh, you get resources. I'm gonna throw away the Queen's Castle. I'm gonna play Rafiki and I'm gonna quest with Cursed Merfolk. For two, he can't fight because there's nothing to fight at the moment. And also he has zero attack. You can see his stats there. Zero attack, one defense. He wants to be challenged. He's not really going to challenge others unless I use Merlin to give him plus three. In which case I could clear the Piglet. Piglet, this is like a swarm style deck it seems like to me. Well, you have two or more other characters in play, this character gets plus two lore, so he wants to swarm the board early. Rafiki only wants to challenge, he doesn't want to be challenged. So not going to be a character that I'll quest with very often. Simba. It gets inked. So the cards that have this little circle around their cost, this decorative circle, are cards that can be added to the ink pool, which you then use as a resource in the future turns to pay for other cards cards which should not have the ink border or this the decorative border around their cost are cards that cannot be added to your resource pool. Minnie Mouse, it's an evasive character. 
and he's going to attack my merfolk which forced him to discard a card from his hand which generates card advantage for me I'm going to ink this one drop so I can play the three uh, I want to play kit cloud kicker I think who will return a character to the opponent's hand I want to return piglet and then I'm gonna well yeah I think I'm gonna return piglet Actually, I'm not sure what I want to do here. I know I want to play Kit. I want to return Mini. I think I'll just return Mini, and we'll go for the board clear. Mini, and we'll have Rafiki challenge Piglet. And we'll pass. Genie can't be inked. So right now the only card I have that can be inked is Merlin. And then I could play Mother Knows Best. So that's actually a song. A song card, it says a character with cost three or more can exert. That symbol means exert or exhaust. To sing this song for free so I don't have to pay three if I have a character with an action available and I don't mind using it. Stitch. This character can challenge the turn they're played. Okay. Mini it gets inked this time. And that's all. So you do generally want to ink a card every turn, at least in my experience. And I'm going to play Merlin for some card draw. And then I think I will quest with Kit. I actually might sing Mother Knows Best and return Stitch. So that exerts my character, and then the card takes its effect. This is like a uh, bounce your opponent's cards back to their hands, or if there's cards of yours that you want to bounce, you can do that as well. We have a couple of characters that do that. When you play this character, banish her or return another character of yours to your hand. Okay, we'll go ahead and ink Chernabog's followers. And then we'll probably just play Merlin. Alternately, I could ink the followers and then bounce kick. And get rid of Simba. Or Doc. Doc's actually a, an accelerator. We're now we're inking the followers. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, quest with Kit, and then I'm gonna bounce him. And then I think I'm gonna bounce Doc back. and quest with Merlin. I don't mind if Merlin gets challenged and leaves play because he draws a card. And I, I have a little bit of card disadvantage going on. Like most card games, that's not a good thing. But we have board advantage, so we're playing a tempo style of game in this particular game. Teeth and Ambition. So he's dealing two damage to his own character or and to one of mine as well. He's probably not going to challenge my Merlin since that's a advantageous trade for me. He might do it with Stitch who has Rush. So the summoning sickness is irrelevant. 
Yeah, he's gonna, even though it draws me a card. And we got friends on the other side. So we want to ink a card here. Play this character. I don't know if I want a genie this turn. It's not a very high value card to return to my opponent's hand. Could play the Queen's Castle, could move Madame Mim there. Actually, I think I like that play. Let's get some card draw going. So this is a location. The cost to move a character there is listed on the left side of the card. And then I'm going to sing. Oh, I don't have a character. I thought Madame Mim was a three cost, but she's only two. So opponents can attack the location. It has seven health, which you can see on the right side. It passively adds lore without needing to quest. I don't know if locations are that strong in general, but there does seem to be at least a couple that are quite good. They soak up damage. Um, they... I should have inked the friends on the other side. I just forgot to do it. That was a mistake. So I draw a card with Queen's Castle. Um, Madame Mim can go ahead and take out Simba. I'm going to bounce the Stitch since that's an expensive character. So I'm going to ink the friends on the other side. Play Genie. Bounce Stitch. And then we'll go ahead and challenge. Simba. We can't quest with that or do anything else this turn, so I'd say our position is looking pretty good right now. Okay, my opponent conceded. a new set of cards into the ink lands released very recently. In fact, I believe release events for it are ongoing. And we're using some of the new cards in this deck. Okay, we'll mulligan the Why can't I click on that card? Okay, there we go. Uh, I'll keep one of the Ursulas. Looking for a one drop here. At least we got a two and a three. Tinkerbell probably going to get inked. And we didn't find a one drop. It's going to be Ursula the Deceiver over Flynn Rider, I think. Um, Madame Mim. Friends. Yeah, we'll ink Flynn. Play Ursula. Okay, opponent does not have a song in his hand. He's playing a Jafar deck. And it's a Jafar deck with a decent draw. He's looking for a Jafar whole new world combo. 
which is Jafar gains lore when you draw cards and Whole New World draws cards for both players. Uh, okay. So it's not great that he's got that. Tiana is just a 1 3, doesn't do anything special. Probably the next card is going to be Ursula. And then we'll probably sing Mother Knows Best. So he's getting Jafar out. He's going to quest with Tiana. Um, we'll ink. Ink Mim. Play Ursula. And then that character will trade very poorly with Jafar if I quest with her. Uh, I could deal one damage there. I think I will. So my Ursula can trade and kill it if he quests again. I don't think we're off to a very good start here. I could sing Mother Knows Best, though, to return a character to their opponent's hand. Or I could draw cards with friends on the other side. That's an interesting trade. I was expecting Jafar to kill it. Uh, I think he wants to save his Jafar to play big Jafar, that'd be my guess. So we can bounce something with Kit here. Gonna want to sing can trade with Ursula, which I think I will do. And then I'm going to want to use this Ursula to sing. Could just Mother Knows Best and get rid of everything. And then friends on the other side. Next turn. Um, here we'll just go ahead and ink the other Ursula. Oh wait, I thought that that second play spent my ink. Did it not? Maybe I could have played something else. Still learning the mechanics. So we know he's got big Jafar that he wants to play. Let's sing with Ursula and draw cards. So apparently it doesn't spend the ink and I could have done more last turn. Whoops. Okay, we're going to return that. We're going to play Cursed Merfolks. Uh, 
We want to keep the big Jafar off the board. Shift means he can play a bigger or higher cost version of the same card on top of that. I think I will not ink anything this round. I know we're going to do that. Let's sing. And bounce his stuff. I think we'll just, might be just passing. Uh, I'd like to get Madame Min now. We've got big time card disadvantage here, which is not good. We'll have to hope the cursed merfolks get challenged to get rid of some of these cards. But this is a, a tempo deck. And I did mess up one turn where I left all my ink unspent due to lack of understanding of the mechanics. So he bounced his own Jafar back. In order to get rid of my Ursula. Who he didn't want doing any more singing. Play Rafiki. Quest. If I trade there, it's a very disadvantageous trade for me. I think I might, I mean, I need Mother Knows Best for the big Jafar, I think. So, that's all I'm going to do. It's not a good turn. I'm sure he must have Whole New World by now. We slowed him down, but I don't really think I'm going to win this. However, I'm not sure he can afford to just let my cursed merfolks continue questing. I need that mother knows best for Jafar. Saving kit may have been a little greedy here. Maybe I should have played him even though I couldn't use his ability. There's Jafar. Just has evasive Another Jafar. So he's going to get rid of one of my cursed merfolks. He has to discard a card to do that. Merlin. Okay. Nothing I can bounce with Kit. I'll use Rafiki here. Get 
got some lore. So the only question here, what to do with Madame Mim? If I quest with her, it's a very good trade for his Jafar. Do I want to ink, kit, or keep him? What six costs are in my deck? Uh, I don't have anything higher than a six. I think I'll keep Kit here. That's all we're gonna do. Also need potentially a singer from Mother Knows Best. King Yizma. I'm a little okay, so there's the big Jafar. Who we can bounce with Mother Knows Best. Okay, so he's going to kill my Cursed Merfolk, discards a card, and then we can trade with Madame Mim. with this character. No, I'm not. I'm going to sing. Oh, right. He's evasive. Okay. No, I'm going to quest. And I probably just lose here. Because he's going to whole new world me. Actually, probably shouldn't have quested. He does gain a lore when he leaves play, but Queen's Castle will draw me a card, and I really need the card draw. So I think that was bad. Maybe it doesn't have whole new world. It's possible. So you got two lore for drawing two cards with Jafar. Oh, he chooses the quest to not take out Merlin. He's going to let me have the card draw. That I didn't expect.
Is this because he's out of location? Well, how come he can't sing? I'll have to Google this. I don't know why this isn't working. I'm going to have to look this up later. Oh. Can just do it that way, uh, which I will do. Rid of the Jafar. Play Cursed Merfolk. Let's have this dude sing. Go ahead and ink. And then we'll play. Ursula and see if he's got a whole new world. He does. So we can get rid of it. Which is very good. So that was a strong turn, I would say. Very strong turn. He can use Simba to kill my Merlin and then kill the cursed Merfolk also. Which would not be good. He could also take that trade with Jafar, which I kind of expected him to do before now. I think I could have won this if I played it a little better. Should have inked the kit earlier, I think. We are at 17 though. Maybe he doesn't find another whole new world. Let's check. He did find it. <laughs> we get rid of the second one. That's got to be frustrating. Um, then we'll go ahead and uh, move Ursula. I'm going to hang on to Tink. Could move Madame Min as well if I got rid of Tink. Actually, I probably should have done that. I'm not sure I like this card in this deck. It's evasive, and you can give another character evasive. I guess I've yet to evaluate how good evasive is. Uh, I, he has to kill my queen's castle or he loses. That's not a character though, so banishing that doesn't really help him. Proc Simba. Okay, he found a way to prolong the game at least. One more turn. It's going to come down to top deck, I think. Let's see what we draw. See what he top decks. He has to top deck a way to deal with my Merlin questing. He's got one, two, three, four, five, not enough. So depending on what he drew, he needs like another smash, I think. Or he's gonna lose. He 
can deal two damage to my Merlin. He can draw, looking for an answer. Okay, he conceded. Alrighty, so that's going to be the first Lorcana gameplay video. More to come. And thank you for watching.